Welcome to the Practical Enneagram. Dr. Mary Phyllis is an educator, scholar, businesswoman and philanthropist whose work came into my view through that wonderful hub of potential connection and collaboration, LinkedIn. I like how two people can be from totally different walks of life and backgrounds as Mary and many of the people that I've interviewed are and have been and still connect over our shared appreciation for the transformative power of the Enneagram. Being a part of the Enneagram community has brought me a huge sense of belonging actually, which I know is meant to be a more sensitive issue for certain types, but sensitive for all of us, I think. This interview is about a process of transformation that Mary developed and was using with clients for years and has now systemized into a program for coaches and therapists. It integrates the Enneagram with Gabor Mate's compassionate inquiry, as well as other things from Mary's vast reservoir of knowledge. I hope that you enjoy. Thank you so much for being here. It's an absolute privilege to speak with you, actually. You've worn many hats in life so far, I can see. So can you share where you're predominantly focusing your energies? Well, up until last year, actually uh, July of 2021, I was um, director of the master's program at a small university in Columbus, Ohio. And I was using my Enneagram there. Mm -hmm. With, with the students. But what I found was that everything that I was doing was, was in a small group, in effect, in a small group. So um, I was approached, actually, by those who I've been working with who asked me to go out on my own and to teach others how to do what I do. So in the last year, I've been working on systematizing all my research. It's under now a Dr. Mary. Um, through this, this program called the Method of Transformation, we are now coaching others to do what I've done for the last 20 years. Mm, mm, okay. The Enneagram is used not only as the testing tool, but the navigation tool throughout the process. The Enneagram gets to the core of who that person is or who they are meant to be. It's a wonderful starting point. When was your introduction to the Enneagram? 2017. At the time, I had already worked with a capability approach that was looking how societies should be developed in order for humanity to develop. And that's where my focus was for about eight years. This, the Enneagram, my introduction to that made me focus not on just society, but what is happening to the individual. Mm. Sneaky suspicion now that you might be a social type on the Enneagram. Self-preservation self too. Self-preservation too. And, and do you work with this aspect of the Enneagram much, this instinctual aspect? Absolutely. Do do? I think it's yeah. very important. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, I have been a self-pres all my life. And mm. from my childhood trauma, I lived to survive. Mm. But those can change. The two can't, but the self-pres social. So I am a very social. And, I'm, and I do work towards, you know, embracing that social side. Because when I get wrapped up in the self-pres side, yeah. um, I lean more towards my one wing, mm. Mm. which is I realize that's when I'm stressed. Okay. So I normally, I normally test when I'm really healthy as that three. Um, but when I'm in a bad spot, I tend to go to more towards my one. Um, yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it, isn't it? So a measurement of health being your access to one of the wings. That's a, that's interesting. Yeah. Just like the lines, they're not mm. as important as the mm. lines, but what I notice in both my clients and myself is when you're more integrated you lean more towards one side when, mm. you know, when you're disintegrated, you, you, it's kind of like you move away and you see those vices coming up and you mm. lean towards the other side. If we could look at them and we could work towards the more like the higher parts of that, mm. then that would be great. But when I lean towards my one, oh my goodness. And I don't know if I could say it here, but bitchy Mary comes in, you know, it's gotta be this way, my way. <laughs> so so yeah. no, no, I can see it now, which, which that like, that's, that's why I'm saying I now can see 
where I function from. I become more ob- conscious and objective. And that's that's what I hope for all my clients. That mm-hmm. is what we want to do, isn't it? Live present centered, be able to see our actions and where they are leading us. Yeah, yeah. Here's so another aha moment for me, mind blowing, was when I was introduced to Gabor Mate mm-hmm. and his compassionate inquiry. I, I was introduced to him because uh, n- not anything to do with the Enneagram, but because I have an autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. And um, my son said, you know, you've got to see him because he he speaks about when the body says no and how there's a breakdown in the body because you don't deal with emotions. And and, mm-hmm. and emotion um, research is, is a lot of what I do too. It's part of our method of transformation. And when I started reading it for personal, when he was explaining each of the illnesses and the type of person that will is prone to that illness, it connected to Enneagram types for me. Really? So that's the work I'm doing right now. I'm correlating between the illness and the Enneagram type. You will have the genetic component already, but being of a certain type makes you more prone for that gene to be activated. Oh my God, that's crazy. I'm also really interested in children in the Enneagram and it's horrible, but I'm using my grandbabies as, as research, but, but my daughter knows (laughs) in all transparency, she knows. Um, Wouldn't it be amazing if we know if you're prone, a child, we know that we really don't know until they're older, but I can already see he's one of three types, my Mm. three-year-old. If I know that, And genetically, I know that in our family, we have this disease. Mm. We can be ahead of it, Mm. not only for learning, but also for medical reasons. Mm. Mm. So so, um, a nine and the illnesses that a nine has because they just store it all in Mm. with the gut, with the problem with the gut. If they know ahead of time, then we can teach them at a very early age how to deal with their emotions, which we all types should, but Mm. especially the nine. They keep it all in the gut. They have a lot of problems in the gut. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's an example. The broad notion here is that we somaticize illnesses, right? Or, or conditions. Um, um, uh, emotions. Emotions, yeah. Emotions. We don't deal with, we don't work through them. Mm. And so we hold them into our body mm. and they, they will manifest into illnesses eventually. I know years ago I was introduced to Carolyn um, Mice. Oh, yeah. She had that same idea in Anatomy of the Spirit. She first wrote about it. But Gabor Mate is a medical doctor, and mm-hmm. he is now proving it medically how this works. Oh, wow. That's really exciting. And, and it's interesting because Carolyn looked at it intuitively. She just, mm-hmm. she just intuitively knew Gabor is proving it medically. I wonder what their types are. Have you ever internally speculated? As you know, we're not supposed to do that, (laughs) but it is fun to do. I would say Gabor is is either a five or an eight. Yeah, right. Which which doesn't sound... No, it totally sounds... Right, yeah. And would you say, Carolyn, a two or a four or... I'd say, I think a four. Yeah, okay. I think a four. I agree with you, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear about this method of transformation, please, that incorporates the wisdom of the Enneagram. First question, who is it for and what's its goal? So it has been used and didn't have this name Mm. until a year ago. Right. But it's a method that I've used with clients, like I say, for 20 years. I, 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 I was helping individuals discern what direction they're supposed to go with, like what career and and so so it was used for the individual the the, the so if you ask me if you ask me what it is it it it's um i'd say it's a a, a psycho spiritual journey that begins with a compassionate inquiry mm-hmm. of your story and it aims to define your purpose as it relates to the overarching um story called creation because i come from a from a theological mm-hmm. philosophical place it's, you know where what is your place in this overarching story uh, along the way we aim basically to gain more clarity on what your goals are mm. on on uh what your definition of success is because it's different for everyone make sure we have that right what your gifts and talents will be 
or what they really are, your values. We have to know what your values are. And I bring it down to, to you need to have three values, two to three values. And every, once you know that, life becomes so much simpler because decision maker making, if, if they don't align with your values, boom, yeah. decision, decision easily made, right? Happiness is connected to your virtues. You, mm-hmm. you have to work on, and, and the Enneagram, that's a, that plays a big part in this, in the, that section. And, and then again, really big part, which you're hearing a lot out there is um, how to read and navigate your emotions. Because like mm-hmm. I said, Gabor says, um, if we don't deal with your um, emotions, they manifest and they will become illnesses. Um, and I draw from um, psychologist uh, um, Susan Daniels. I don't know mm. if you're familiar with her. And Mark Brackett. I, I bring in a lot of their research. To zoom out for a second, it sounds aligned with spiritual sort of um, guidance. There is a spiritual component, mm. but it's, I, I would never tell you what that spirit is. Mm. So I have students who are agnostic mm-hmm. or atheist or their their faith may come from science. Mm. So their spirit comes from the science world. So mm. as I said, mm. this can be adopted into any any program that you already have or your belief system. But mm. there has to be a spirit of some sort that draws you. Every single psychologist has said from, from Maslow to contemporaries like uh, Scott Barry Kaufman, there has to be a spiritual component component of some, some something that draws you mm. to try to self-actualize. Mm. That spirit can be whatever you may draw from or whatever attracts you. But you have to know that that my training ground is is theological, philosophical mm. and theological. And that's where this stems from. Got it. So it's very it's inclusive um, in that regards. Yeah. And um, can you say, Mary, more about the spirit well, where the Enneagram cross sections with this method of transformation. So you mentioned something about the virtues there and the virtues in the Enneagram take on a very specific meaning, don't they? So they're meant yes. to be the actualized heart states of the of the types, um, which is different from phil- philosophical views on virtues. No? No, um, they align pretty, pretty well. Pretty, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, no, they do. So, so the Enneagram is... Like I said, both the starting point, mm-hmm. because before you even start the program, um, you're, t- you're tested mm-hmm. and you go through a debrief. And, and if you if you've gone through the IEQ nine, the debrief is very similar to mm-hmm. what what they do. Um, I've been trained in that. So that's where the de- debrief came from. Mm-hmm. So it starts there. But it's so it's not only the testing tool, but it's also the navigation tool. So at, so let's say session one is looking at your story. Mm-hmm. Well, we look at the story based on the childhood wounds mm-hmm. that the Enneagram teaches, where those come from. Um, and each step along the way, there's there's an information from what the Enneagram world, where that comes from. Say, so what is the childhood wound for? Let's do our type just because we're not going to have time to do all the types. So take the childhood wound for type two. What is that, Mary? Because I, I can't remember. The childhood wound for a two. Yeah. That I am only loved if I help you. Oh, yeah. If okay. I have a tough time saying no. Right. So, I have a tough time saying no. My belief system is if, I, if I'm mean, if I stand up for myself, if I put my needs in front of yours, um, that basically you're not going to love me anymore. Mm, oh my god they, they're always so heartbreaking they, they really things. are yeah. they really are so 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 the two really only felt loved by their parent when when they were helping or pleasing them mm. Gabor teaches that trauma isn't what actually happened to us it's it it's what happens within us the story that our ego starts telling us to survive mm. basically so you're doing uh, or facilitating compassionate inquiry around the childhood wound, and that's how the method begins. We I use compassionate inquiry as the um, inquiry, the questioning technique throughout the whole program. Right. But I start um, in that first story, mm. we go back and we look at the story. We make sure, and it's a very Carl Jung or Richard Rohr mm. technique of understanding, are we still, are we living in the right story? 
Mm. And so we visit, who are you? Like, well, tell me a bit about yourself. It allows the clinician to be a compassionate witness, mm. to go to that point in time as the witness that that child wanted at that time. So mm. when I speak about myself, my mother wasn't looking at me. She, she, and I, and I will tell you, um, I'll, I'll, sh- I'll share with you what it was. Um, I remembered I was very, very young. I'm born on Christmas Day. Difficult to have a birthday party Christmas Day. I really wanted a birthday party. And it was Christmas Eve. And my mother, it was midnight. Mm. And I was crying because I wanted my birthday party. My mom was exhausted. Mm. She, she, she wasn't paying attention. So what happened, my little three-year-old self told me my mother doesn't love me. So, and then that too, mm. well, I got to do something to make her happy. Mm-hmm. So may, and I'm, I'm selfish asking for this party. Compassionate inquiry allows the clinician to be the witness that the child needed. And mm-hmm. it takes you back there. It's a questioning technique that gets you there and mm-hmm. revisit it and let go mm-hmm. of what no longer serves me. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You said earlier, you use the instincts lens in this method as well. Can you speak to how it it manifests in the method of transformation, the instincts. Mostly in the debrief, I use it as part of, I have a a section called in a nutshell in Mm -hmm. the debrief. And so I don't only look at your dominant type. I look at the top three dominant types Mm -hmm. along with your instinct. And and so I I offer, and I'll train my clinicians to offer kind of a, a snapshot of who, who you are at this point in time and the instincts play in that regard. And the instincts will, along the way, also feed, feed information of how you, the lens that you see through. So, mm. so as a two, a two self-prez, <laughs> I have that, this very childlike persona. Mm. Although I love to take care of people, I really want to be taken care of. Mm. Mm. Um, and this playfulness as that's my self pres that's what happens and i can now see when i'm stressed when i have something go wrong in my life i automatically go to the giggly child which is horrible mm. horrible it's, <laughs> so so that that is an 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 example that we would work on like mm. watch yourself as this happens um, you, you asked about your uh the um wound for the five for the four yeah oh you're a four i'm a four, four or yeah. five. Oh, you're four. A f- i thought you were a five uh <laughs> um of course the abandonment issues mm. the abandoned you know you were not loved you were just yeah. too bad you're on your own <laughs> and again is there truth to that i always think even with the childhood wounds ego's already alive then isn't there so it's not like this is grounded in it's not like this is what happened. It is what happened, but it's also how I interpreted it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And at the point when the ego starts telling you, the trauma already happened. Mm. So it happened before. You had felt it before, but didn't have a story. So mm. you felt alone and cut off before. Yeah. But then something happened that confirmed. See. So I had a question in my mind as you were describing this compassionate in- inquiry process around the childhood wound. I was thinking, well, what if someone doesn't remember the specific childhood wound? Because, and I've just realized there probably wasn't one. It's just the earliest case of remembering. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so when you, in this technique, talk about what's mm. happening now in your life, is this the first time? And they say, they think, and no, you know, in high school, this happened. And then you go back there and it's kind of like a going back and going back and going back. But it is taught that it could, it's pre-verbal too. So it actually can go back in utero because we know, and it's been proven, Gabor Gabor, uh, has evidence that even in utero, as the mother is dealing with her emotions, the brain waves of the child, the heartbeat changes. They are already absorbing it. So, so I've, worked with um clients that can have that feeling that they say i don't even have words for this i really don't know Mm -hmm. yeah okay how is this being made available this your method to coaches and um did you say therapists as well is available to therapists do you need the coaches who go through your training to be trained 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this, it, it is a rigorous program. Mm-hmm. I am a master's level professor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an eight month program. Mm-hmm. I want to ensure that they're trained properly. Having this role in a person's life for me is sacred. Mm-hmm. You have been invited to the deepest part of someone's personhood. Yeah. I, I explain it as the divine seed that is planted in all of us. It's kind mm-hmm. of your purpose in life. And when you're invited into that, that's that's not to be taken lightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're offering just roundtable discussions right now mm-hmm. to see what coaches need, mm-hmm. coaches and therapists. And we have downloads that are accessible. But if anyone's interested, mm-hmm. just reach out to me, mm-hmm. um, Dr. Mary LLC. Uh, Mary at drmaryllc.com. Okay. In in September, our um, that's our next cohort that mm. that's going to be starting. Right. Thank you so much for your time, Mary. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Let me hit stop. The next interview is with Dana Vitarello, guide at Enneagram Prison Project and the most amazing being. Don't miss that one. Be back in two weeks.